talk about Sabrina the Teenage Witch today. I know it's not the usual superhero fair that I normally talk about, but it is Halloween. I should be talking about something horror related. And besides, the Netflix show just debuted last week. But you know something? Both the comic and the show are actually worth talking about. One is a great reinterpretation of a classic but honestly dated character, and the other is a great adaptation of said reinterpretation. And if you're not reading or watching either, you probably should. So today, let's talk about Archie, but not your grandmother's Archie. Let's talk about the chilling adventures of Sabrina. Sabrina the Teenage Witch was originally created by writer George Gladder and artist Dan DiCarlo. Initially, she was sort of her own character, but in time she would become a regular player in the main cast of Archie comics. She was a fairly popular character, even headlined a couple of her own comics for a while. But when you look at her place in the greater overall Archie universe, the fact that she was a witch never really seemed like that big of a deal. She always just seemed like a regular teenager who also happened to have magical powers. Honestly, it feels like they only called her a witch because she was a woman who could do magic. Yeah, she had a talking black cat and a couple of other things here and there, but they never really leaned into the witch aspect of Sabrina. Hell, I could argue that the 1996 show starring Melissa Joan Hart did more to emphasize Sabrina's witch aspects than the comic book did. Granted, they did it in a fun TGIF sort of way. She's still a witch, but an all-ages, family-friendly witch. Nothing out of place with the typical Archie fair of the time. However, within the last five years, that family-friendly image of Archie was soon about to change, beginning in 2013 with Afterlife with Archie, written by Roberto Aguirre Sacasa with art by Francesco Francavilla. This series took Archie, Jughead, Betty, Veronica, and the rest of the Eternal Riverdale teens and put them smack in the middle of a zombie apocalypse. And not like a typical Scooby-Doo zombie apocalypse, I'm talking more along the lines of a Dawn of the Dead zombie apocalypse. This series was straight up dark, gory and definitely intended for mature readers. People get eaten, disemboweled. The way Frank Avia draws zombies is truly the stuff of nightmares. The series was a runaway success. I mean, the concept alone is enough to drive people to pick it up. It's Archie meets zombies, but the actual content was so good it kept people coming back for more. Sabrina the Teenage Witch actually does appear in an issue of Afterlife with Archie. This time she's reinvented as a witch of the dark arts. This appearance was popular enough to lead to her own spin-off slash sister series, The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. Again, written by Roberto Goye Sacasa, with art this time by Robert Hack. Quick side note, both the comic and the show are actually called Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. There's no the in the actual title. I'm gonna be referring to it as The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina throughout this video for most of it because, let's be real, it's easier to say and it sounds a lot better. This series took the concept of Sabrina as a witch of the dark arts and ran wild with it. Set in the 60s, Chilling Adventures depicts Sabrina as a daughter of a satanic warlock and a mortal woman. After her father has her mother lobotomized and then institutionalized, Sabrina goes to live with her aunts Hilda and Zelda in order to learn the dark arts and prepare for her dark baptism on her 16th birthday. Agurie Sakaza really leans into the Satan angle of witchcraft in this new series. They make it very clear that this isn't some random demon the witches of Greendale worship. It's actual Lucifer. It gives the series an extra level of believability and spookiness, and the art by Robert Hack takes that spookiness and multiplies it tenfold. The artwork kind of reminds me of wood paintings. Everything's done with all these earthy tones, and while the series isn't as gory as Afterlife with Archie, it's by no means any less grotesque. It does a great job of creating this new world where dark arts witches have been an actual part of human history and around for centuries. The victims of the Salem witch trials were actual witches and are considered heroes and martyrs to those of the witch race. And it does a really good job of reintroducing a long forgotten character of the Archie catalog, 
Madam Satan. She debuted back in 1941, but never really stuck around for any substantial length of time. Here, she acts as the main antagonist for the series, a great foil for the more innocent and naive Sabrina. So yeah, this comic is pretty great. Even though it's only eight issues and the second story arc is being left in some weird, unfinished limbo, like, are you gonna finish it? Is it just gonna end on a cliffhanger in issue eight? What's going on? Please tell us. But again, that's the comic. How does this new fancy ass Netflix series that just debuted compare? To be honest, pretty well actually. I'm only a few episodes in, but I really like what I see so far. The series is more focused on Sabrina's uneasiness with her upcoming dark baptism. She wants to fulfill her destiny and become a true witch, but doesn't want to sacrifice her mortal life in the process. The show has just as much horror and grim imagery as the comic, but does it in different ways. Sometimes it's more subtle, less grotesque. Other times, it's just straight up bad shit insane. And yet there is this subtle feeling of playfulness to the whole thing. Now to be clear, this show is nothing like the Melissa Joan Hart classic from the 90s. Yeah, a few names are the same, but it is drastically different. But the creators of Chilling Adventures do seem to have an understanding that most people who know the character of Sabrina have the original version in the back of their mind somewhere. And while Chilling Adventures isn't exactly a comedy, there is a level of campiness to it that actually makes it feel like it's more accessible to new watchers of horror. It's still kind of scary and it has a lot of scary images, but it's nothing like, say, The Haunting of Hill House. That show will f you up. The cast is great. Kiernan Shipka is a wonderful Sabrina. Michelle Gomez is the perfect Madam Satan. Salem the Cat doesn't talk as much as he did in the original, if at all, but it's fine, actually. You get used to it. Now, some of you may be wondering how does Chilling Adventures of Sabrina compare to Riverdale, the other big reinterpretation of classic Archie characters, this time the main cast of Archie. Well, I don't watch Riverdale, so I can't really do a direct comparison. However, I would say that Chilling Adventures does a really good job of taking the mystery aspect of Riverdale and adding more fantasy and occultism elements to it, making it its own perfect thing. Also, I feel like everybody on Riverdale is each other, and I'm probably wrong on that assertion, but I can guarantee they don't do that on Chilling Adventures. They're too busy trying not to get blood everywhere. So yeah, no matter what medium you're reading it in, Chilling Adventures of Sabrina is a great way to spend your Halloween. The eight issue comic book series is a breeze to read through with some of the best art in all the genre of horror comics. And the show is a fun, scary reinvention of a character that's honestly been stuck in time since the 60s. Even if you don't watch it on Halloween or even in the fall, any time is a great time to check out The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. And now is where I ask, what do you think about this radical reinvention of Sabrina the Teenage Witch? Do you dig it? Did you catch the Netflix series? Or do you just miss the Melissa Joan Hart show that badly? Let me know down below or anywhere on the internet. And yes, I was a fan of the original Melissa Joan Hart show when I was a kid. I mean, Clarissa Darling is back on TV. What more could you want? Also, she's a native Long Islander, so my people. In the description below will be the first and really only trade of The Shelling Adventures of Sabrina, a classic collection of Sabrina the Teenage Witch comics, and a link to Wolf Den Apparel. Clicking and buying anything from any of those links does go a great way to help support this channel. But if you want a cheaper way to do that, all you have to do is watch our stuff. We have new videos every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Saturday with the current season of The Backlog in full swing. We got some good games on that show this season, let me tell you. And as always, Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern, it's Wolf Den Live. So subscribe to see all of that. Like this video, share it with a friend, a friend who's confused as to why they would turn Sabrina the Teenage Witch from a fun loving all ages show into this really messed up horror show. I think they might be turned onto it if you explain to them that this has happened before and it was worth it the original time. Thank you all for watching. Happy Halloween.